Hello, Patriots, and welcome to Patriot Point. I'm glad you're here with us this week. Got a lot of things for you. First of all, let's start talking about the date. Tomorrow will be April the 3rd. And, of course, it's the fourth month, and the year ends in 2-1. So that means that tomorrow's date will be 4-3-2-1. I hope everybody's ready for something big to happen. But I bring up April the 3rd because of something important that happened in Kentucky's history. So I'm going to start a, a section this week, and it's going to be a segment I want to have repeatedly throughout the program about Kentucky history. So let's get started with the first one. <music> Yes, moments in Kentucky history. It was April the 3rd of the year 1792 that the Kentucky Constitutional Convention began, where the delegates, we had five delegates each from of the nine counties. Yes, we have 120 counties now, but they only had it grouped into nine counties back then. Well, they all met in Danville, Kentucky, to start writing Kentucky's Constitution. And, of course, that, as we all know, became law, and the, uh, Kentucky became the 15th state to join the Union on June the 1st of that year. Now, talking about the Kentucky Constitution, I want you to notice the very opening words of it in its preamble. We, the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, grateful to Almighty God for the civil, political, and religious liberties we enjoy, and invoking the continuance of these blessings, do ordain and establish this Constitution. You will notice that it says that all of your rights, all of your civil rights, all of your political rights, and your religious rights all come from God. They don't come from the Declaration of Independence. They don't come from the federal Constitution or the state one. They all come from God. Did you know that the constitutions of all 50 states start in their opening paragraphs by saying God gave us all of our rights? Every state phrases it their own way, but it's in every single state constitution, even to the present day. Well, I just thought that would be an important part of Kentucky history for you to know about. And, of course, also on this weekend is Resurrection Sunday, Easter weekend. I hope that you'll be going to your church and celebrating the Lord's Resurrection. And, of course, this will mark the one-year anniversary since Andy Bashir deployed the state police and illegally tried to shut down Kentucky churches that dared to have services on Easter Sunday. Of course, a court ruled what he did was against the law, and he had broken the law. I am still waiting for there to be any repercussions for Andy Bashir's breaking of the highest law of the land, the Constitution, which the court said he is guilty of breaking. Still waiting for any repercussions from that. Probably going to be waiting for a long time. But let's talk about some laws and things which actually did get done in the Kentucky Capitol this year. The legislative year is over. Mark Twain said the most dangerous time for Americans is when Congress is in session. And he was right. Well, the same thing holds true in the state. But now the Kentucky General Assembly is finished for the year. They will continue to meet in committees and they can discuss things, but they are forbidden from passing any new laws. So I want to go over some of the laws they passed, some of the ones they didn't pass. First of all, let's talk about a law they did pass that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know about. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> yes, and the law that they don't want you to know about is Senate Bill 8 which is now a law, and this bill says that the government of Kentucky cannot vaccinate you against your will. Up until then, the Kentucky government in the law says that if they decide, they can give you a vaccination against your will. Well, they changed this law here just this past week. The governor, uh, they passed a law, the governor vetoed it, and they overrode him. Here is the voting record of who voted for this and who voted against it. You may want to pause the video so you can look up your legislator and see where they stood on this issue. 
Now let's talk about another thing that got passed this year. This year saw the single biggest expansion of gambling in recent history. Uh, the Democrats have been trying to do this for years, and the conservatives were able to keep pushing them back. Even though the Democrats have a majority in the House, they were able to stop it. But this year, with the Republican supermajority, they passed the biggest expansion of gambling in Kentucky history. Here is also the voting record of who voted for this and who voted against it. May want to pause the video for you to just make a little note on what your legislator did. Well, here's something that did not get passed. They did not increase the gas tax in Kentucky. Praise the Lord for that. I had some legislator who came out and said, well, hey, we, we were never going to do that. Why are you talking about this? They wrote two, not one, but two different bills to do this. And you know why they didn't pass or take up either one of these bills? Because you, the people, sounded off, you spoke up, and your voice was heard. And there was so much pressure from the people that they decided we better not increase the gas tax because the people are paying attention. It has been said before, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. So I applaud you for being vigilant and being active. You just save yourself some money at the pump. Let's talk about another bill which did get passed, and this is House Bill 91. I am so happy with the General Assembly for passing this bill. This is a bill that says there is going to be no constitutional right in Kentucky's Constitution that says you have the right to an abortion, not stated or not implied. Now, the reason for that is some judges are just discovering a right to an abortion in their state constitution. Well, to cut that off at the pass, the Kentucky legislature said that's going to, we're going to change the Constitution and say there's no such thing. Now, with this being said, they cannot change the Constitution. All that the Constitution allows the General Assembly to do is to put constitutional changes up for a vote of the people. And the legislature is allowed to put up up to four different topics for the people to vote on to change the state constitution. So this bill said we're going to make this one of those four constitutional changes that you will get to vote on. Now, there's no elections here in 2021 in Kentucky, so this will be on the ballot in November of 2022. So between now and then, I hope that you will help me get out the vote for life and let's approve this positive constitutional change that says there is no inherent right to an abortion according to the Kentucky Constitution. It'll save a little bit more lives, and if we can ever get the federal Supreme Court to reverse its decision before Roe versus Wade and go back to where it's just up to the states, whatever they decide, then we're going to get rid of abortion in Kentucky right away. I hope you'll do your part in the election next November, not this November, and let's get out there and vote for life. Let's talk about another bill which died, did not happen. This is a fascinating bill. This is Senate Bill number 63. This is a bill that said, listen, we're going to get rid of all these electronic voting machines. We're going to go to paper ballots because with paper ballots, I can count them. If there's a discrepancy or a question about it, I can physically go back and check them. All the computer is going to do is give you the same number it had before. So the Senate passed this bill, the House passed this bill. Guess what? Andy Bashir vetoed it. For some reason, he doesn't want to have paper ballots, but they have a chance to override his veto. The Senate voted, yes, we will override this veto. We need to have this. And the House of Representatives did nothing. That's right. Over in the House of Representatives, the leadership didn't even let the House of Representatives members have a chance to vote on overriding this veto. Makes you wonder why. Some of your representatives would have been for it. They voted for it before, but the leadership denied them the right to override the veto, and so that measure died in Kentucky. I hope you're remembering and writing that down as well. Another measure which never saw the light of day, which was Senate Bill 106, the Save Women's Sports Act. And that would say you actually have to be a woman to compete in women's sports. Imagine the craziness of that. Uh, well, they didn't even allow this to come out of the committee. Uh, and so the legislators never even got a chance to vote on it. Again, leadership sent it to a committee and made sure that it died there. Something important to think about. 
Well, now I want to shift gears as we get near the end and give you a little COVID update. Uh, I found this fascinating, saw this on the news this week. Uh, you'll see here, this is from Fox News citing the CDC. And they report that in 2019, there were 38 million cases of the regular flu which is about average. If you average it out, which I did, that averages to 11.5% of the American population. So 11.5% of people caught the regular flu in 2019. Guess how many people the CDC reports caught the regular flu in 2020? 1,822. Yes, you are hearing me correctly. On a normal year, 2019, 38 million Americans caught the regular flu. But last year, only 1,800. I think we are beginning to see the evidence. I've said this for a year, as many others have, that the regular flu is being now diagnosed as COVID. The regular common cold is being diagnosed as COVID. You got an ingrown toenail, it's being diagnosed as COVID. And it's not nearly as much as we have been lied to and led to believe. And if you really want to look at some more information about this, check this out. This past week, New York State reported a giant spike in COVID cases. They reported 50,000 new cases, a big spike in numbers. And of course, New York State having a mask mandate and probably more compliance than any other state in the union. But at the same time, the state of Texas got rid of their mask mandate and their virus cases went down. So a state that has a mask mandate, cases of sick people go up. Without a mask mandate, cases go down. Uh, you just ask Fauci about this or, or Bashir, and they're going to fumble all over themselves. I bet Bashir would probably say something like this. I want people to know that I don't know what we are doing. No, he hasn't had an idea what he's doing now for a long, long time. Well, that's some of the things that happened this week, a bill that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know about, that vaccinations, you don't have to get them if you don't want, and now you have the legal choice to not do that. Now, I also want to give you a special thing, a teaser for next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about who's going to be the next governor of Kentucky. We're going to do a little spoof on the Brady Bunch, call it the Governor Bunch. I think you will find this very interesting. I'll be interested to hear about who you think will be Kentucky's next governor. We're going to put a poll up next week, and I hope you'll tune in for that. So until next week, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like this, make sure you hit that little subscribe button that's in the bottom right of the video screen right now. It really helps the channel out. And until next week, I'm Lee Watts for Patriot Point. Stand strong and breathe free. I want people to know that I don't know what we are doing.